Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm ZS Carnival from ZK Research, and I'm here on the uh, in the Expo Hall at RSA 2025. I'm actually in the Security Operations Center. I'm with Jessica Oppenheimer uh, from Cisco and Splunk. I guess you work for multiple companies now, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, just a, a, a quick and run yourself. I think so. I'm the director of security operations. I've been at Cisco for 11 years. I was an Army Special Agent, CID. If you've seen Jack Reacher, I did that, just not as big as him. Did yeah. computer forensics, joined a startup out of the Army. That's how I worked my way into cybersecurity. All right, so you got a lot of security in your background. That's right. I've been doing this for 20 plus years. So, as I mentioned, we're in the Security Operations Center. Uh, what, is the, what are you trying to learn here? Why, why do you have this even up? Yeah, so 2017, the RSA conference came to the Black Hat team, because I've been part of that for 10 years now. And they said, hey, you guys have a network operations center slash SLOC at Black Hat. How about you do something here? At the time, NetWitness and RSA conference was part of RSA the company. They've since split off, and now RSA C, the conference is a separate entity, but the SOC continues. The point of it was to have an educational exhibit this is a security conference, the largest one in the world. Everyone here is in security or security adjacent, and they should be aware of best practices. Yeah. So take a look at the visibility, what happens on an open network, much like you find at a hotel, or you're going to Starbucks. You believe we ran at Starbucks a few years ago at this conference. I mean, that's how yeah. big this thing is. Yeah. So you go to Starbucks, Wi-Fi, you log in, what type of security protocols should you take? How to, to educate people at a conference like this that has a similar type of environment, and what do we see? So that was the start of it, and it has evolved over the years. I've often thought of, uh, you just threw an access point up in a Starbucks and called it free Wi-Fi. How many people would join, and what are the types of things you'd see them doing, which I guess is what you're doing here, really, right? Facts, right? So a malicious actor could take a laptop with a NIC card, network interface card, in promiscuous mode. You know, we're all a little promiscuous when we get out here at yeah. RSA <laughs> conference, right? and sniff all that traffic, run Wireshark, <laughs> have some little bit of storage, and they could be sniffing these packets. Well, we put it at a grander scale where we've got our partner Endays. They've got 400 terabytes of storage times two, so two big things of storage. Every packet coming through is stored. Why that's important is show me the packet Zeus or it didn't happen, right? When you're yeah. in the Security Operations Center, you want to be able to go back to that packet to see that. So they're capturing all these packets, and you have the ability to roll back and to do the investigations. So, Okay, so you mentioned Endace. Yep. I know Cisco's, been, so walk me through the different vendors that are in here and what each one is doing. Great, so Cisco has been part of this since the beginning, 2017. We worked with another partner, the one that I mentioned that had spun off, and they were not in a position of renewal. So we saw that that was coming. We talked to the conference, and it's like, what? What we, we still need this full packet capture. We've been working with Endace for about seven years now. They have integrations with our firewall, with our secure network analytics, which is our network detection response. And they just built one with our XDR. That seemed like a really good fit. So talk to the other SOC leaders, those are the folks that we've worked with at Black Hat and made and the conference made an invitation and they accept. So over here we have the full packet capture coming in. And then Cisco is again as a sponsor. We brought in more technology over the years as it's made sense, which we'll happen to walk through. And of course, Splunk was joined our family a year ago. We actually brought in Splunk last year for the first time. And those are the core things. We also have some donations like from Alpha Mountain AI and Polsci who give us threat intelligence every year to bring in. So those All are right. the core. So you, uh, you made the interesting statement that everyone's a little promiscuous in RSA. So I got to know, what are some of the things you've seen on the network? What are some of the funny things, the more serious things? Uh, what, yeah. what have you noticed? You know, POP3 is unfortunately still alive. We POP3 lives on. <laughs> still try to kill it. Yeah. So unfortunately, people are still using that protocol. Which is an email protocol, highly insecure. Highly insecure email protocol, right? Yeah. And you think your email is secure, you're looking for that little lock symbol, but if your provider is using POP3 or you haven't done those check boxes. Who uses POP3 now? I know, right? We keep on So <laughs> unfortunately, this morning, we found that there was a partner of one of the sponsors here that is using POP3 and some intellectual property, some highly confidential information flowed through this network that everyone had that could see. And so we wrote up that report. We provided it to the legal team at, at RSA conference. We provide SOC services here under contract. And there's very strict data handling. Uh, someplace is a company that Cisco 
competes with the marketplace, right? So we're working for the Security Operations Center for the conference. We provide that to the legal team. They're going to take a look at that and go through the disclosure process. So that's something that's a really serious matter of your intellectual property here at a conference, prototypes of things. And then there's funny, silly stuff going on. I got to know. What's some of the stuff. funny, silly stuff? Right? So <laughs> we have this big number, 65 there. That's how many unique accounts have their passwords in the clear. We were up to 1,000 passwords in the clear. So it's a lot of passwords. That's a lot of passwords <laughs> in the clear. We were just uh, saw this morning that someone in the clear was able, you able to go into their student accounts in a country in Europe, have wreak all sorts of havoc. We always, we have, give awards for the content. So we give an award of the best dating app. Tinder for the years was the most popular dating app here at the conference. A couple of years ago, we noticed that the swipe left, right for the photos. Now this was back in 2017. It was over, th there was Valentine's Day and I was on Tinder at the time, I'll tell you. I okay. was a little promiscuous, <laughs> but well, back in, since happily married. Okay. So, so anyway. don't look up Jessica anymore. Anyway. So uh, you're not gonna plug on <laughs> Tinder this year, but back then, so all the swipe, all the pictures were in the clear and we the swipe right or left. So we notified that company, they took action. They encrypted the pictures, but not the swipe left or right. We ran an algorithm, you oh. can see how many lefts or rights were going Are on. Are there more lefts than rights? There were, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but uh, you, gotta, you gotta have standards. Sorry guys. <laughs> right? So actually a congressperson got involved when they heard about this at our speech and contacted MASH and the sense now all secure. So okay. that's, what else we're here about is to not do a shame. That was a success story working with that company and now we can share who it was and they, they fixed it, right? So yeah. those are the type of things. Oh. So some good came out of that. Some good out of it, yeah. except they've been displaced as the most popular dating app. It's now Grinder for three years in a row. We'll see who comes out for 2025. Changing demographics. Maybe I'm, it changed I'm the just market saying, now. This love is love. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so that's what popular dating app. What are some of the other big applications you see? You got to be a lot of social media, right? There's a lot of social media. We see that. You got to check your socials, see your status. Over on the firewall, we see the most common app. The number one app right now is your iPhone and your iMac downloads. So I don't, you know, there's been a lot of security updates. At Black Hat, we actually host a server to be a caching server for those. Oh, we, we don't, idea. right? Because uh, we have limited bandwidth when we go like to the smaller conferences like in Singapore and in London. Here they've got some big pipes and so it's not really affecting the things, but lots of updates. We That's part of our presentation that we give is update your operating system, come secure. When you come to security conference, do that beforehand perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Not on an open network. There's no host isolation here. You can go see everyone, you can go yeah. talk to everybody. It's very promiscuous. And then and the network. Over the years, we've continued to join, get a really close relationship with the Moscone Network Operations Center. We've showed them what we're doing. We brought them in here. They brought us into their knock this week as well. We've given them access to the Splunk dashboards. So they can see the data, what we're doing with the extended detection response for detections. And they're now hosting, for the last couple of years, our DNS. So when you go to google.com, the computer knows to go to 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Okay. We have to all use those domains as humans. That's the address we're going to. All that traffic has been going through our, our umbrella or now secure access for the last several years. With that, we're able to have that visibility, but also provide security, right? This security show, Yep. you would think everyone here has some modicum of knowledge of security, but apparently maybe not when it comes to dating life. But if you're the average person going to malls, baseball games, airports, what are some things you should be doing to make sure that you're protected and you're not, not everything you do is exposed to every hacker out there? Yeah, so when you log into this network, it gives you some advice. There's this pop-up screen that says, hey, hi from the SOC, by the way. <laughs> Oh, it you, does that. Okay. It does, yeah. So I from the SOC, from Cisco and Endace, use a VPN, use a personal firewall, do your updates for your applications and your, o, your OS, and also, obviously, don't click on things. Part of what we've done is we've identified a phishing don't campaign. Things, yeah. Don't click on things, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've identified a phishing campaign that's here with a new AI-driven domain generating algorithm that used two to three random English words because it doesn't look as suspicious, right? But we saw that at Black Hat Asia. We've seen that at some major other SOC events that I've done this year. And so we use AI to detect it. We see an XDR from the logs coming over from the secure access and Splunk. And then we could hit a generate AI-generated summary report for the executive team, took it to 
the conference and said, hey, we know we want to allow people to do cool stuff. Go to the booth, they paid lots of money here. Show the latest demo, the latest tools. You want to be able to go to a briefing, show the latest techniques, but if we can show you that someone is impacted, affected, we would like to secure them. And they said, yes. Yeah. So we're now up to 18 domains from that campaign that we're actively blocking. We're protecting of our dozen users that came here infected to keep the others from being infected as well. All right. Uh, well, thanks. That was a great update on it, uh, on what you're doing here in the SOC. So if you come to RSA or future RSAs, you can find Jessica in the SOC, but you won't find her on Tinder. That's not this time. <laughs> come over for a SOC tour. We yeah. do those three times a day. Learn a little bit about it. Yeah. All right. Thanks so, a lot, man. Appreciate the time. So on behalf of Jessica Oppenheimer from uh, Cisco, I'm Zeez Caraval from CK Research, and thanks for watching. Be safe. Uh, yeah, be safe. Use your VPN. Use your personal firewall. And uh, so, and give us a like, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast. Thanks, Jessica. Give it a like. Cheers.